Hello guys, I'm Rick with Techspin, and I've always wanted to tackle a big tower for building a new PC. So much of the market is focused on the mid-tower form factor. What about having some design versatility with more room to create your custom build? What better way than to try my hand in a brand new tempered glass model, a surprising large but stylish giant. So I have here my first truly large tower enclosure, and with all that TG or tempered glass goodness, that is the current market trend. And it's the obelisk by Sadies, which they sent us, that we'll be looking at. Shall we check it out? So this is the new obelisk from Sadies, and I'm very happy to be one of the first to get my hands on this. It could be one of the best full tower cases I've ever seen. When unpacking the case, I found an extra foam insert, and inside is a top TG panel. Considering the top panel floats and damage may occur during shipping if it was attached, I like that Sadies put it in its own padding to keep it safe. The obelisk stands tall next to the Sadie's Osiris we reviewed on the left for $21.90 NT or $72. Bucks. The Ra in the middle we'll review next at $29.90 NT or a hair over $100 US dollars. And the obelisk which comes in at $39.90 NT or $134 at the time of this review. These are geared toward different market segments so exactly what do you get for the big ticket item? Glass. Lots and lots of glass. Each of the panels is covered on the front and back with plastic, so you get the joy of taking it off. Woo, listen to that sound. No corners were cut here, with tempered glass over the entirety of both sides. For comparison, I've put it next to a two liter Coke, just to give you a sense of its enormity. So at $134, how good is the obelisk in comparison to the Ra and the budget Osiris? But what if you have a bit more cash to spend on a top tier glass case? So let's review the obelisk right after the intro. So the obelisk's main points are the four glass panels support for graphics cards up to 395 mils, which is 15 and a half inches, and up to two hard drives with four SSDs, or six SSDs total, with the included mounting brackets. Standing 45 centimeters deep by 21 wide and 53 cm's tall, it lives up to its giant moniker and has a large cavernous space inside to house big hardware. Even with all the extra room inside, the case already has the standoffs nicely installed for ATX boards. It can fit MATX and ITX, but the right side has a raised section for SSD mounting and therefore no support for server EATX boards. The glass panels are held on by large padded thumb screws and the panel sits on the four mounts making removal and insulation easier. For panels this size, I would have liked to have seen a lip to sit the panel on, but it's still manageable and Sadies have put the stickers on the plastic for easy removal. The four 120 mm RGB Mandala front mounted fans pull in air from the two openings at the top and bottom of the glass. Inside the front there's remnants of a five and a quarter bay to support water cooling mounts and the front supports 120, 140 and 240 mm radiators. Though you'll lose the beautiful front RGB aesthetic without a bit of intelligent screw juggling to attach the rad to the front fans. Speaking of fans, we have the Mandala RGBs which we've previously reviewed. Four of them come included and certainly make a statement when you power on the unit. They plug into a controller box which has space for a total of 8 fans and 2 light strips. An odd choice because the case supports a total of 12 fans. So even with a 360 radiator installed, you'd still have one fan spot open if you wanted to fill your case with Mandalas, though not an issue with a dual 240 rad setup. However, the controller does have support for 4-pin RGB headers to plug onto compatible motherboards, allowing synchronization, a first for Sadies. In addition, you can control the RGB from the button on the top front of the case, along with the standard audio jacks, dual USB 3.0, and dual USB 2.0, along with lights, reset, and power. The tempered glass top has a cutout in this area, and it gives it a nice feel, though the RGB toggle can be slightly harder to press. Underneath we have the magnetic dust filter which fits over the top vent, which can house 120, 140, 240, 280, and 360 mm radiators for cooling. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content.
At the bottom, we have this unique power supply cover with this cutout pattern for lots of airflow into the area. The top of the cover has support for three 12 centimeter fans too, and there's room on the right and plenty of rails on the back panel to support mounting a water cooling reservoir. You'll see the two SSD caddies up front. There's also two more behind, and they slot in at the bottom and attach at the top with screws, though you must use those two exact locations. The front space could be more versatile as there's no options to mount hard drives here, and look at all that massive space. Large CPU coolers are not an issue if you choose to go that route, with support for up to 170 millimeters. So a typical tall Hyper 212 at 160 millimeters will fit inside easily. And here we'll measure out the graphics card length, which does indeed support cards up to 39.5 centimeters. This is a typical MSI GTX 970 4 gig gaming installed in here for reference. Down behind the PSU cover, it's large with space for 27 centimeter power supplies. And at the front, there's two drive bays for hard drives or SSDs. And the case ships with the extra hardware inside one of these caddies. The four thumb screws for the top glass are found in the hardware bag, which also has replacement feet, chassis screws, long fan screws for the PSU cover, and the remote to control the mandalas. I also really appreciated the inclusion of a cleaning cloth to keep your glass silky smooth. Behind the CPU area, there's actually space for two 12cm fans, or one 120 mil rad if you should choose. Cable management is decent with rubber grommets for everything, and plenty of easy access to the areas usually forgotten, like the CPU 8 pin at the top. At the back, there are numerous cable tie points with two centimeters clearance to the glass, so you won't have any troubles. Sadies have removed the back cover cutouts, but not to worry, you can still fit both a four pin and Molex through the back grommets fairly easily. At the bottom of the PSU area, there's padding to help reduce vibration and support your power supply. And on the case bottom, there's a cooling port for the drives and the power supply area has a large magnetic dust filter which comes off as you wiggle it out of the tabs. Replacing the filter isn't hard to do. There's also some nice branding on the front glass panel with obelisk at the top and the Sadie's Wolf residing at the bottom. On to the big feature, RGB sync with motherboards. Using the Mystic Light app to change the rear LED color, you can see in the corner behind the graphics card. So right now, it's independent. Let's grab the remote and hit MB sync. And you can also enable this by holding down the RGB switch on the case if you've connected it. Now picking a color and hitting apply, all the fans change to that setting. It follows the animations you pick also. This is breathing. Here I'm using the MSI B360 Gaming Arctic you saw in the Johnsbo CPU cooler video. I'll link it here. Note the MSI Mystic Light app doesn't seem to work fully with my new board, with light speed and brightness unusable for me, so I'll be contacting them after this. I actually really like the Johnsbo staying on full white all by itself, although if you must have matching everything, there are RGB CPU coolers out there. A nice job by Sadies for integrating existing products to include digital RGB. But there are a couple of annoyances like the need for front intake air filters. The giant side panels meet flush with the front glass, something which aesthetically looks great, but limits the airflow. Sadies could have stopped the glass at the edge of the case and extended a fine mesh section around to provide more adequate airflow. Also, they kept a similar feet design to the Osiris, and while this looks great, a thicker metal or different design could have been used to support the weight of the whole case and components. In conclusion, the Sadie's Obelisk case will really fit your needs if you want a large RGB case to show off your ATX build. Suited for SSDs, it scored points for quality manufacturing, getting a 9 on the meter. I know the current case trends are away from hard drives, but most consumers have a bunch of media and having options to place more than two would have sealed the deal for me. Sadis has taken steps to integrate motherboard RGB headers and sync them, so this is really a great step in the right direction. With the inclusion of a syncable Mandela head unit and four fans already installed, this gives a lot of value for the 3990NT, $134 list price, especially considering all four glass panels. There's very few cases coming in at this price point with all these features, and frankly, none with this level of finesse. 
So this case scores a tech spin gold ward. They've done very well on this case. They just need to work out filtering that front air intake to get up to the next tier award. Other case designs have worked these out, so I hope Sadie's can address this soon. Let me know what you think of the obelisk in the comments below. If you're looking for a cheaper or regular size alternative, we'll be checking out the Sadie's raw case fairly shortly after Computex, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again go to Sadie's for making this video happen. We're open to ideas for upcoming episodes. Feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, then please do subscribe for new content. Be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.